Thank you. God bless you. Uh, we are together again. We are praising God uh, with our hearts and our lives and everything. We want to obey God. We are not strangers to God. We came from him. What we have in our hearts is the breath of God. The Bible says in the beginning, God put his breath in, in us and we became living souls. And that's why we are saying, uh, everybody who is walking around, whoever, wh whoever you are, you have the breath of God in you. And ultimately, at last, we report back to the owner of that breath. And that's why every day we must preach to you. You have a seed in you. You have something in you. Uh, you have a degree of godliness. And God bless you. We are reaching out to you from Apostolic Faith Church, Bahati, Nairobi. I'm Bishop Peter Gatimo. I love Christ. I serve him. And I'll live for him. The Bible says in Philippians chapter 1, verse 6, He who began good work in us, we will complete it. We will continue with it until the day of the Lord. Now, and, and our, our, our message today is, is becoming a winner in Christ. Becoming a winner in Christ. A winner. Actually, we are talking about a life whereby you attain uh, uh, godliness, you attain satisfaction until you become what God right now has for you. By the way, becoming a winner in God is becoming what God has for you. For instance, if you check uh, Genesis chapter 26, you find that the, uh, the kind of life that the world was introducing to uh, Isaac was different from what God had said about him. If you go to chapter 26, the Bible says, and there was famine, famine in the land beside the fast that was, beside the first famine, famine that was in the days of Abraham. And Isaac went to Ab Abimelech, king of Philistines in Gerah. And the Lord appeared to him and said, do not go down. By the way, going down to Egypt was just a response like any other. He was just behaving like a human being, um, a leader of a family, a person with commitment to responsibility. How you should think, he said now, as a man, as a responsible brother, as a responsible head of the family, as the head protector, provider of the family, I have an option. Since there is lack of food, let me go down to Egypt. That's a decision. But God comes in and intervenes, interferes, and take over and say, now I stop you, don't go there. That is okay. It shows you are thinking. You are making a natural rational decision but now i'm saying as god don't go to egypt remain where you are do not go down in egypt live in the land which i shall tell you dwell in this land and i will be with you now where god will command you to be and you are clear about it you will prosper not because of the surroundings but because the word of God will command the resources in your favor. And one way that we will become a winner in life is obeying the word of God for your life. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 4 verse 4, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Yes, I want to ask you. There are decisions that you are making naturally in response to what is happening in the world today. But I still want you to have a room for God to bring his might now. Yes, God said, Isaac, you are not moving. You are staying in the land that I have shown you. And I will bless you in that land. Yes, God can declare you are living somewhere in Pedifeli. You are living somewhere in the suburbs of the city. And he says, no, no, no. I'm going to bless you here. 
When God says, I'm going to bless you there, he means I'm producing my own standard in the natural standard. It could be an area of status, social status is low, but God is introducing his own status in that status. Yes, it's a place where they say people are poor, people are, don't think well, people are not, uh, they, they are not fruitful, but God said, no, no, I'm blessing you there. God can produce his standard in world standard. And because he will produce a standard in the world standard, you find yourself taking dominion in the world standard. And that's why the Bible says, God says, do not move to Egypt, dwell there. I'll bless you. I'll bless you. God says, I'll bless you. Uh, I'll bless you and bless, I will be with you. Number one, I'll be with you. Number two, because God does not say, I'll bless you. He says, I will be with you and bless you. In others, what God gives first is his presence. And then his presence facilitates his mission. Uh, are you hearing this? God will, call, will come and be with you and his presence will facilitate his mission. His presence will facilitate the provision for your vision. He says, I will be with you and because I'll be with you, I'll bless you. My presence will facilitate my mission for you. This is my mission. I will bless you and to you and your descendants, I give these lands. Note, now, uh, Isaac was dwelling in Lord, but when God came about, came around, he said, you and your descendants, I'm giving this land, which means the land where you are, the neighborhood, and if you go to the Bible, the Bible says the land used to spread over from Iraq, Negev Desert, Lebanon, Mediterranean Sea, all this land is yours. You don't have to move. You are the owner. You don't have to migrate, Isaac. You are the owner of the land, not only this one, even the one you left and the one that is, that is beyond this. You are not simple the way you are. You are, not, you are not an individual that should be tossed here and there and forced to relocate. No one should force you to leave you should live in the promise. I remember Martin Luther King Jr. Jr. saying, we do not want to live as if we are being forced to live. And Bible says, verse 4, I will make your descendants multiply as the stars of heaven. I will give your descendants all these lands and, your, and, and in your seed all the nations of the earth will be blessed. Now, how do you beg for food how do you go to Egypt to beg? When the promise says, even the Egyptians and those who are far off, they will be blessed because of you. In your seed, all the nations, including where Isaac wanted to migrate to, all the nations of the earth shall be blessed. I pray from today that God you produce his might for me and for you. So that you not be forced to live the way you ought not to live. Like now in the world, now things are changing here and there. They're talking about the climate, inflation. They're talking about uh, maybe lack of integrity in some areas. Mm. They're talking about hiked prices. I read today in the newspaper, in the news, they're saying petroleum has less, the, 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 the price per liter has gone up. The other day I was in Washington, they are, they are selling one gallon at $5.6. Well, one year or two years ago it was two or $1.6. You see now, you, 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 you feel like, uh, let me say something. There are people who do not pray. They don't seek God's word. They just know they, do, they just rely on their possibility to migrate. For instance, a Kenyan would think if I migrate or relocate to UK, life is better there. 
if I relocate to Australia, that's where my blessings are. Let me say this. You see, if you disobey God, the Bible says you shall be cast everywhere. You know, I, I learned Deuteronomy 20 years ago, say, cast shall you be in the city. Cast shall you be in the countryside. I prayed for somebody in America this morning. Yes, he said, do you know something, Bishop? The same curse that dominates my people in Kenya has followed me in America. And I said, can I believe God? I declare the blood of Jesus in that family. And I said, by the authority of God, I put up the curse. You know, on Saturday I preached in a crusade. I said, curse has three things. There's the curse itself. There's the sin, which is the seed of that curse. And the demon in charge of that curse. There are so many things to be done. And that's what we are saying. When God said, Isaac, don't, don't migrate. Because there are two things unique about you. One, I will be with you. Because I'm with you, you can't move away unless I move. In other words, I am with you here. And I'm not moving away from here. So, so you'll be where I am. I'll be with you there. So you'll be where I am. I'm not going to Egypt. Number two, I, not the condition of the world, I will bless you. Number three, I'll multiply your descendants like the stars of the, of the sky. And the Lord says something extra. And that, now, another thing, all these lads, you're talking about you are in a specific lad. But Isaac, I want to change your mind. I want to change your mind. All these lads will be blessed through you, or all these lads belong to you. All these lads belong to you. Where you are in the neighborhood, wherever you be, all these lads belong to you. And finally, says, and through your seed, all the nations of the earth shall be blessed. You see. One thing that you cause you to settle is the definition that God has for you. And one thing is this. If God is with you where you are, and God is not migrating, you need not to know that God can cause you to be blessed. If God moves with you and tell you now, I command you to migrate, you can migrate. But God is saying, I'll be with you here, and right here, I'll bless you. Where you are, I'll bless you. Now, there's something else that I would like to ask to know. That Isaac, if you, if you read verse 6, Isaac dwelt in Gela. He went, he dwelt in the, with the Philistines. And when you go to verse 12, it says, And Isaac sowed in that land, and reaped in the same year a hundredfold. And the Lord bless him. Isaac sowed in that land and reaped in the same year a hundredfold. And the Lord blessed him. Where? Stay in that land. I'll bless you. Now, people were not planting anything. It, it was dry. But because God was with him, he had that kind of move and directive eh, in his life planted this lad and god caused him to leap hundredfold now the bible says there's something that started in the life of isaac if you read verse that it says and the man began to prosper and continued prospering until he became very prosperous. He began. No one came to this world with money and prosperity. You begin, you continue, and you become. Can you hear this? Don't, you know when we meet and people say in the church, there are those who are millionaires, there are those who are not millionaires. To me, I see those who are millionaires who are not born millionaires, they became. And I want to preach something unique. Verse 13 of chapter 26 of Genesis, 
is a product of God's presence and blessing. Isaac was just like other people. But the promise of God was made strong in his life. God can make his promise strong, real, powerful, effective, productive in your life. Establish in your life. And because you are product of his promise, you become like Isaac. He planted when others could not plant. What is this? Why do you plant where others are not planting? It's a quickening. God cannot be with you and you stagnate. I want to tell you something. Whenever God is, there's a movement. Whenever, whenever God is, there's quickening. Whenever God is, there's renewal of mind. Whenever God is, there is, there is impartation of new strength. The Bible says, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They will not stagnate. I'm saying to you, anybody who stagnates, check her out. You, have, you don't have a real, I'm talking about real experience. You can't have God's presence and you cause God's standard. And you cannot have God's standard which is not being activated. You see, if God comes to me and says, I'll bless you, he will come back again and make that word living word and practical. It must, the Bible says, God will not set his word void. It must achieve his something and take back glory to him. And that's very important. And therefore, the word said, no, I, I, I'll bless you. If you check, the Bible says, he sowed in that land and reaped in the same year hundredfold. And the Lord blessed him. And he began. You, you see, it's a, because of this, because of God, because of God's blessing and presence, you must be glad. I want to declare to you, one of the ways God wants to make you a winner is to begin a process. If you read New King James Version, Genesis 26, 26 verse 13 says, and he began to prosper. I tell you, friends, you need to be, today I'll command something in your hands. He began to prosper. Genesis 26 verse 13. He began to prosper. Number two, Continued prospering. Number three, until he became very prosperous. This is three stages that presence of God will raise. Remember, all other people were not doing anything. There are conditions, adverse conditions of economy, adverse conditions of climate, adverse conditions of surroundings that unless God brings something new the adverse negative poor conditions produces a mind that has stagnated a mind that has no real, real practice of life a mind that is not productive a mind that is that is somehow stuck Right now in the world, most people don't know what to do. You open your eyes. You know, I was in Washington the other day and I walked around. And most of the shops that I used to see, I would buy a computer just in the next shop. They were all closed. Closed. And, and majority of God, God downs and, and uh, big shops, they are just there. And I wanted to buy a computer. I said, no, Bishop. If you're to buy one, we can only order from the factory. We can order from far. Because the neighborhood, the shops are closed. So what you see in the surrounding, in the surrounding, it puts in your mind a, 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 a kind of a stagnation. The shop is closed. It's not paint. There's no paint. This is... is, is is, is, is destroy the surroundings are not instilling life in you. Your mind is somehow full of images of non-productive neighborhood. But now you see what's happening now. 
When you go out shopping, when you want to pay your flight, it's double or triple what you used to pay two years ago. But I say this by God's grace. By God's grace. We can't deny this factor. Things are things you change. But even before things change, we will not stop. God will not withdraw his projects. God will not withdraw his will. God will not shelf his mind, his vision. And that's why men who bear the promise, God will come to you like he appeared to Isaac and say, yes, stay on. I will bless you. And because the world is not so much friendly and conducive, I will be there to command blessings. And that's why Isaac planted in that land, while no one would dare plant anything. Why? Because you can't have God's presence and fail to have a direction of becoming productive. God, God cannot just come to sit down with you and cry with you. God, you come with the kingdom. That's why he says, our Father who is in heaven, hallowed be your name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. When the kingdom comes, the will of God will be done on earth, just as it is in heaven. God will not ask how the government, what the announcements, the budget, the planning. God will say, no, I want the kingdom to take over and my will to be done on earth, just as it is in heaven. And that's why when the presence of God was with Isaac, Isaac was quickened. He couldn't just have God allowed. And nothing is happening. This is a quickening. Plant. Plant. Not like others. But the will of God be done in Gera. By Isaac. Just as it is in heaven. And, if, and God did something. Water was available in plenty. In some way from the ground. And Isaac had favor. To harvest. 100 fold return. And because of that. In this world. Well, while the others were going down, down, becoming poor, God started a progressive process and the man began to prosper, continued prospering until he became very prosperous. That is Genesis 26 verse 13. So much rich and powerful, even beyond King Abimelech. And he had to be chosen away. And when he went away, they did know that the property, the riches, were not just uh, an incident that happened. It was a person with God who was being used. And you know what happened? They followed him. There was argument. He dug a well. They took it away. Another well. There was a lot of argument. Until now, Isaac reached a place. If you check Genesis 20, 26, you realize that he lit a place. Uh -huh. Let's look at, uh, at verse 22. And he moved from there and dug another well. And they did not quarrel over it. That's one thing. So he called its name Lehoboth. Because he said, for now the Lord has made room for us and we shall be fruitful in the Lord. Now, remember, God appeared to Isaac in Genesis chapter 26, verse 1 and 2. Do not move away, I bless you. I'll make, I'll strengthen, I'll confirm my covenant through and in you. But when he reached Lehoboth, a place where he would settle and increase, God appeared again and said, Now I'm the God of your father Abraham. Do not fear. I'm with you. I'll bless you and multiply your descendants for, for my servant Abraham's sake. Now when God appeared and, Abraham, and, and Isaac having known that he is settling in that area, he built an altar. Why altar? Why do we have this issue that anytime God will appear to patriarchs, you will be an altar? I want to tell you something. Never live without an altar that is speaking. One, 
An altar is a place where God has manifested himself. And where the name of God dwells is a meeting point. It's a place set apart for God. I don't know. This man will never live without a certain place set apart for God as an altar. Altar that you set and you declare the name of God over it. And you raise the banner of God in that altar. It will always speak. Actually the altar, I've come to discover some of our people, when they are attacked by evil satanic men, they ask them, where do you come from? Where is your church? Who is your bishop? Who is the name of your church? Where do you fellowship? Why are witches and satanists these days asking our people about who is your bishop and where is our church? You know why? Because the altar the standard of the altar and the priesthood of the altar follows you in your business if you are right with God. And that's why Isaac established an altar. And you know, at last he had a place. Let me say, however much you struggle, proceed on. The blessings are not from, in, in, from outside. They are within you. I'm the carrier of favor. I'm the one who has a rema word. When Joseph was sold to be a slave, his brother did not know. He was the carrier of the dream. And the dream followed him. The only thing you need to do, if you want to be a winner, keep the dream and keep the God of your dream. And keep the discipline and the faith of the God of your dream. Look at this. Keep the dream that God gave you, rema word. Keep Walk and live with the dream giver, the living God, Jehovah. And keep the discipline, the practice, the doctrine, the, 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 the righteousness of the dream giver, God himself. God cannot be where his faith, his character is not appreciated and practiced. If you have the three things, you will begin to prosper, continue prospering. And become prosperous. Note, this is different from what you call riches among some people who are just pretentious and evil people. This prosperity in this context is this is a product of presence of God. It's not product of corruption, it's product of God's presence, it's product of obeying God, it's product of hearing God, it's product of Keeping the covenant. This kind of prosperity involves faith, financial prosperity, settling, covenant, altar. It is, it is, it is a, a, a combination of unique ingredients that emanates from God's presence. You be, God raises his standard in you. That's what we call prosperity. And the money you have, it has two things. It has riches, anointed financial favor, and anointed promises and gifting. Those two go together and you win wherever you go. God bless you as we embark on becoming winning, becoming a winner. This is a very powerful message whereby you say becoming a winner in life. By God, not some philosophical ideas, by direct intervention of God. Will we continue next time? God bless you, God cover you, God heal you, God raise you. You are the Isaac of today. Obey God, and God, you start a journey whereby you began to prosper, continue prospering, and you become prosperous. God bless you.